Consideration provided by... People think unusual circumstances means complicated taxes. But for a TurboTax Live expert like me, it just makes things interesting. So, give us everything you've got. What if I'm a professional gamer with a ton of expenses? If they help drive views, let's talk deductions. What if I'm in a state with no income tax, but my survival videos are viewed in 38 countries? I can help. And if this is a business dinner, save those jerky receipts. An interesting life can mean an even greater refund. You do your thing. We've got your taxes. Intuit TurboTax Live. We are on the set of 911 Lone Star with the man, the myth, the happening now. Three-year-old Lena Keel now 17 days missing. We take you back to the new area of interest that the FBI has been searching now for a second day in a row. Next. And as Omicron cases continue to rise in Bear County and people try to get tested, what one chain of urgent care clinics is seeing and how it's different from other spikes. Our next cold front arrives midday tomorrow. I'll be back to let you know what that means in terms of temperatures and wind in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. First at 5, she's been missing for 17 days now. And the latest tip to SAPD and the FBI has turned up no new leads. Frustrating. For two days, crews were searching a grassy area with a creek near the 5700 block of Babcock Road. This video gives you a general idea of just how far that location is from where Lena Keel was last seen. It's more than two miles away from her family's home at the Villas del Cabo apartment complex. Our Jaffney Gray joins us now from that scene with why the search has now been called off. And where are we now in the investigation, Jaffney? Yes, guys, the San Antonio Police Department just released a statement saying that the search of this creek that you see right here concluded without any conclusive findings. Police say the initiative to search this area broadened the grid from where Lena was last seen Monday, December 20th, between 4.30 and 5.10 p.m. at the Villa del Cabo Apartments. Police say countless hours have been devoted to evidence analysis, chasing down leads, and re-interviewing people. Now, we caught up with the family who has been working with Pamela Allen, the director of Eagles flight San Antonio, which provides support for families of missing a loved one. Despite that disappointing news, Allen says everyone is still hopeful for a positive outcome when this is all over. We all want her to be found. It's now San Antonio's Lena and, and now the country's Lena. People are just so focused on this because this baby is just so vulnerable and they want her to be found. Now, it is unclear when another search will take place, but police say that the next steps include widening the scope of the search for Lena and collecting actionable leads. There and the FBI are still asking for your tips for a reward up to $150,000. You can call their missing persons unit at 210-207-7660. Now, coming up at 6, you'll hear more about Lena's family and what they've been going through since her disappearance. Steve, Ursula? Jaffney, you mentioned that family. Our thoughts certainly with them tonight. I know we're going to be hearing from them tonight at 6 o'clock, but can you give us a sense of how they're doing right now with all this going on? Yes, yeah, Steve, obviously there is a language barrier there, but I spoke with him and like I mentioned earlier, you can tell that he's hopeful, you know, he's prayerful, obviously. And of course, he's just worried because he doesn't know where Lena is. And again, if she's alive again, this is still being investigated as a missing persons uh, case. But right now, all he can do is pray and hope that she's found safely. Thank you, Jaffney. As do we. Thank you, Jaffney. Meantime, two people found dead at a southeast side apartment on Sunday now identified. They are 18 year old Joshua Charles Wilson and 19 year old Regina Noel Salazar. San Antonio police believe that the two died in what may have been a drug related shooting at an apartment complex in the 400 block of Montrose. They say two others were hit by bullets that went through the apartment walls. The woman who was hit is expected to be OK, but at last check, the man was in critical condition. It is unclear who exactly the shooter was or if anyone else was involved. A man in the hospital after he was hit by a driver on South General McMullen this morning. San Antonio police say it happened about 7 a.m. They say the man not in a crosswalk when someone in an SUV hit him. Another driver then ran over to the man. He was taken to the hospital with life threatening injuries. Neither of the drivers are facing charges. New at five, a fire leading to drug arrests and a potential arson charge. The fire broke out at this southeast side apartment complex along Pecan Valley Drive and South New Braunfels. 
Firefighters telling us that there was drug activity in the apartment and two people were arrested. We do not yet know whether the drugs played a role in that fire, which only affected one unit. No one was hurt. A fight between family members turns into a deadly quarrel. It's led one man to the Bear County courtroom. Edison Karaman is accused of murdering his cousin Christopher Karaman back in 2020. This trial, the only in-person trial underway at the courthouse. All others have been suspended for the month. Our Erica Hernandez with the latest on this fatal family feud. A dispute among cousins turned deadly in March 2020, and now Edison Garaman is on trial for the murder of Christopher Garaman. An investigator for SAPD was the first to take the stand today and spoke about how he was able to get background information on a suspect before he even got to the scene. Witnesses had already told police who they saw shooting from a black car. I was able to look up the name that was given on the radio uh, by the responding officers. Um, and the caller. And what name was it? Edison Karaman. Shortly after the shooting, Karaman was arrested at his home and later charged with murder. During cross-examination, the defense questioned how the detective was able to conclude so quickly that Karaman was the suspect from just witness statements. And if he knew for sure there wasn't more than one person inside the vehicle where shots were fired from. Did Gonzalo ever suggest that there was a passenger in the vehicle? He specified no, he didn't see anybody else in the vehicle. Others to testify today included a crime scene investigator who showed photographs of shell casings that were collected, including a bullet fragment that was found inside the victim's baseball cap. Now, there was a small delay in the trial this morning as one of the jurors had to be replaced because they were exposed to COVID. An alternate was able to step in, and as of right now, that trial will continue. Garaman is facing five to 99 years or life in prison if found guilty. At the Catherine Reeves Justice Center, Eric Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. We want to take a look at the local COVID-19 cases in Bear County. Metro Health reporting the daily change in cases as 2,757. There are nine new deaths to report in the last seven days. Right now, 569 people in the hospital, 134 are in intensive care, 48 are on ventilators at this hour. And this just in, the Associated Press says a CDC advisory committee has approved Pfizer COVID-19 boosters for 12 to 15 year olds. As COVID numbers go up locally, so does the demand for testing. Garrett Berger talked with a local urgent care clinic about what they're seeing right this minute. So Garrett, what's the testing situation like out there? Well, the city has said there is capacity in the community, but if you're actually trying to go out and find a test, it can be hard. Whether it's because the appointments are all booked up or if you're like these, these people who have waited six hours or more to get this far in line. Now, with the sharp spike of cases which have been rising by the thousands this week, Metro Health has put the COVID threat at severe. And of course, each of these cases spurs more people they had contact with to get tested. Texas Med Clinic's chief operating officer estimates their San Antonio locations perform about 1,200 to 1,500 tests a day in all. He says the demand seems like it's the highest it has been, and they've gotten to the point at some locations they have to turn away other urgent care patients. I mean, we've gotten close to that, but we've been able to keep a kind of a blurry line, if you will, and continue to provide care as people walked in but we've unfortunately now had to take steps and and just say at some point in the day i'm sorry we don't have any more any more slots any more opportunities to get seen today making things harder he says their staff is down as well because of their own covid issues now if your usual testing location is swamped the city's covid website includes a list of locations you might be able to try out including two dozen free ones and nearly 80 that may charge some kind of fee now additionally ksat sister station kprc reported that texas is getting six fema testing locations one of which is supposed to come here to bear county hopefully providing some relief to the people who are waiting and who may not even get tested at this location. Live in Fredericksburg Road, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Garrett. In other headlines around America, 13 people are dead. Six of them are children after a fire broke out at a Philadelphia row house. The investigators aren't sure what caused the fire.
They do know none of the four smoke detectors inside the duplex were functioning, so they say no one inside had any type of warning. Started our day at 38 degrees, then we warmed up efficiently with that sunshine and fairly dry air in place. Made it up to 77 by the afternoon, the average high being 63, and notice the record. 81. Now get ready for another cold front to affect things around midday tomorrow. But right now we're feeling the comfortable conditions. Beautiful out there. 79 Del Rio, 78 Pan Maria, 77 right now in Seguin and Utopia, and even 80 degrees. As we go through the evening hours, not much is going to change. Minimal breeze, pretty much a calm wind, clear sky, and temperatures above freezing tonight will be 56 at 10 o'clock by midnight, about 49 degrees. Cold front hits about noon tomorrow. Some changes happening throughout the day and then another cold front later in the forecast period. I'm going to help you pre prepare and plan around it coming right up. Need a lot of planning for a week like this. Thank you, Adam. There are only four places in Texas with red light cameras and two of them are right here in our area. Our Samuel King joins us now. Sam, you've heard from people wanting to know, all right, they get caught in one of these red light cameras. Do they have to pay the ticket? It's a bit of a complicated answer there, Ursula and Steve. Balconies Heights and Leon Valley both still operate red light cameras despite a 2019 state law that bans them. Both cities were allowed to keep those cameras because of long term contracts, but they're not allowed to hold it against you if you don't pay the ticket when it comes to renewing your vehicle or license. And you could be reported to collections, although it's not authorized to be on your credit report. One person who received a ticket calls the whole thing misleading. So yeah, they need to take them down and they need to stop sending these out. How many people have paid this instead of paying a bill? You hear more from Jason Campbell at six o'clock. The Leon Valley City Council voted last April to explore ways to get out of the contract, but right now it remains in force. Red light cameras will be on the agenda for the community's annual town hall later this month. While Balcones Heights cites the safety benefits of the camera for keeping the program in place. As for traffic this evening, some slowdowns on the east side. This is at 35 at Loop 410. You can see some slow uh, traffic there. So taking a quick look at your travel time here in this area, 16 minutes southbound, 12 minutes northbound. Ursula. Thank you, Sam. Still ahead of five. Getting sick probably isn't at the top of your priority list, but it's happening a lot these days and playing the waiting game till you get better can be boring. We're gonna tell you some easy ways though to pass the time, coming up. Many already didn't have enough, and now Omicron has made it worse. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom with stories we're working on for 6 o'clock. We're talking about restaurants. There was already a labor shortage, leaving restaurants struggling to find enough employees. Well, now many of the workers who are on the job, they're out sick, thanks to Omicron. So how are businesses handling this latest storm, and what can you expect the next time you decide to dine out? We talked to the Texas Restaurant Association and employees of a longtime business on the city's south side plus I, I can i can ask her questions if you just wouldn't bother me please yeah yeah i know you don't want me to bother you day two of a contentious hearing over the name of a woman who was running for judge the candidate is part of the uresti political family lisa uresti dasher attorneys for her opponent in the primary claim that that's not the name she normally goes by and she only used the uresti name to get more votes well, a judge made a decision in this case today. We'll break down the arguments on both sides and explain what happened as a result coming up at 6 o'clock. Thank you, Myra. And to delve a little further into what she was talking about earlier, what do you do when you're stuck at home sick? With Omicron surging and flu cases on the rise, you may find yourself under the weather and having to keep to yourself. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore. It's on some ways to pass the time while you get better. <coughs> Sound familiar? Coughs, aches, fever, being sick stinks. But there are some ways to make your at-home recovery a little easier, like binge-watching those shows everybody talks about but you missed. With more streaming services than ever, a dedicated streaming player is often the best way to access them, even if you already own a smart TV. 
They may have features or services that your TV lacks. The Amazon Fire TV Stick 4K Max is $35 and did well in testing. Just because you can't be with your friends in person, you can still hang out. With a gaming console or computer, you can play with friends online. Of course, you'll need a good headset. Look for a headset that is both comfortable and has great sound quality, including the microphone. You also want to decide if you want it to be wired, which is often cheaper, or wireless, which gives you more freedom but can be pricier. For a wired model, the Turtle Beach Recon 50 is affordable, just $25. It got perfect scores for design, sound, and comfort in CR's user study. Want wireless? The $149 Steel Series Arctis 7 scored just as well. And if you need food delivered, you have options. Consumer Reports evaluated people's experiences with the four major food delivery services and found that among these, Postmates was the most prompt. So with good food, entertainment, and friends, being sick can be a little more comfortable. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Take a live look outside right now with live cam. 74 degrees. We're part of a Wednesday warm up. A Wednesday warm up, Thursday cool down, weekend warm up, Monday cool down, however you want. Up and down is what you're saying. Temperature roller coaster, let's just put it that way. So tomorrow, cold front moves through around noon, so a high temperature basically at the noon hour, which is earlier than usual, and then temperatures fall off throughout the afternoon and into the evening. Temperatures up and down, up and down a lot. And here's just one example of our temperature roller coaster. Look at the highs in the coming days. Tomorrow at the noon hour will be about 65 degrees, even warmer south of town. By Friday, the warmest we'll get is 53. Then into the weekend, we're back to around 70 degrees only to cool off again after the weekend and into next week. A lot to keep track of temperature wise, but it's that time of year here in South and Central Texas. Take a look at the readings. 81 Catula, 82 Del Rio, 80 in Uvalde, Pleasanton, 81 degrees. Those are the warm spots. You get to Fredericksburg at 68, Kerrville right now at 72, and currently in San Antonio, we're at 75. There is actually a weak cold front draped across the state. You see the 70 at Junction, Austin, and then 50s to the north of it. This isn't the cold front that's going to be plunging southward. This is actually going to lift northward and turn into a warm front later on tonight and lift northward. And then we're going to tap into some of this even colder air as that plunges southward with our cold front come tomorrow. Again, about the noon hours when it should hit. The core of the cold air staying off to the north of us. The core of it, of course, temperatures below zero right now. International Falls, Bismarck, Casper, Cut Bank, all below zero. The core of the cold air, as usual, isn't going to be flooding into Texas. But take a look at what we're expecting. 7 a.m. tomorrow, typically our low temperature time. A little below freezing in parts of the hill country. But about 39 Carrizo Springs, 41 San Antonio and Canyon Lake. Bevel even warmer, closer to 50 degrees. So there will be some pockets of a light freeze briefly tomorrow morning. So a chill to start the day. Jacket, long sleeves for the kids at the bus stop. Briefly, we're going to warm into the mid 60s around town and even 70s closer to the Rio Grande. However, this doesn't last very long. Yes, we'll make it into the 60s to near 70. You'll feel like, oh, hey, we're on track to have another great day. And then the cold front hits and temperatures plummet. So at noon 65, by 2 p.m., we're in the upper 50s. 4 o'clock, when we would typically have the warmest temperature of the day, well, we're only in the mid-50s at that point. So temperatures peaking briefly at the noon hour and then falling off. So plan for that for afternoon activities. Keep the jacket handy because not only is it going to cool down, but the wind's going to pick up. You don't even notice the breeze outside right now. It's calm out there. It's going to be calm all night. To start the day tomorrow, not much of a breeze. By the afternoon, noon, 1, 2 o'clock, we start to see the winds around 20 miles per hour. And I do think we'll have some wind gusts around 25, maybe 30 miles per hour. And keep in mind, this is the north wind. The cedar breeze kicking back in, so it wouldn't shock me if that wind tomorrow boosted the mountain cedar count even higher. It's high today with count of over 2,000, but it could be even higher tomorrow and in the coming days. And here's another way to look at those winds. Morning, don't notice them. Midday, afternoon, yeah, around 20 to 25 miles per hour. Here's the big picture. Main energy and activities off to the north of us 
There are some indications, though, as we get toward the end of next week, we could have more promising rain chances. Tomorrow, wall-to-wall -wall sunshine becoming breezy, those temperatures falling through the afternoon. And Friday morning, a freeze, about 30 degrees. 53 on Friday, humid fog drizzle on Saturday with a few isolated showers. And the next cold front hits Sunday, cooling us back into the upper 50s next week. Not very consistent weather. <laughs> no, not at all. All right, by the way, the Spurs really could use this guy back. So I'm hoping he got cleared today. He is off the injured list, which means he is available for tonight's game. We're talking about DeJounte Murray, yeah. who is on the all-star list. We need to help him be an all-star, but it starts hopefully tonight with Boston because they're looking for their first win in the last four games. And Zeke, close to a milestone, believe it or not, this season coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs are at it again tonight, looking for their first win on the seven-game road swing when they face the Celtics in Boston this evening. Right now, they're in the middle of a four-game losing streak, including three in a row on the road. After last night's route by the Raptors in Toronto before, as you can see, no fans except players, families, and friends. The good news is the Spurs should have all-star candidate DeJounte Murray back tonight after clearing COVID protocols. The Spurs got off to a great start last night behind Devin Vassell's back-to-back three-pointers to only be down by one at the end of one, but that's when Fred Van Fleet started to take off part of a 14-to-1 run to get the Raptors a 68 to 53 lead at the break. Former Raptor now Spur Jakob Pertl tried to get the Spurs back in this game with 19 points and 12 rebounds. Rookie Josh Primo got a lot more playing time with Murray, Doug McDermott and Lonnie Walker the four still in COVID protocols. But it wasn't enough. Van Fleet finished with 33 points including seven three pointers in the 129-104 route. Obviously there's some strange lineups out there with you know three of our top guys gone and playing the young kids, uh, but it's still basketball and you can show effort on the board, you know, better effort, better urgency on the board, and you can be more solid with the basketball. All right, tip time tonight is at 630. Highlights for you tonight on the Night Beat. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys will close out their regular season this Saturday when they travel to Philadelphia to face the Eagles, even though the Cowboys have clinched a playoff spot as the NFC East champs. There's an outside chance they could move up the playoff seedings from number four all the way up to number two, but they would need a lot of help. For that reason, the starters, such as running back Ezekiel Elliott, tells us they will play in the regular season finale before the postseason begins. You may not have noticed that Elliott has quietly reached 915 rushing yards despite playing with a sore knee, and when he's 75, Five yards to reach 1,000 yard mark on Saturday. The last time Zeke was even close to that number was week six when he had 69 yards against the Patriots. So how can that happen Saturday? I think we do have to have to have a have a good start in the running game. Um, you can't we can't get behind. I think that was a little bit of it last last week too. And uh, I mean we gotta but we gotta from uh, from the start you know get that running game going just so 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 we have confidence in it. You can see if the Cowboys can pull that off live on KSAT 12 Saturday night starting at 7.15. And Micah Parsons has entered COVID protocol, so there's a big question mark whether or not he'll be available for that game. He is their star rookie defensive player. Yeah, better now than during the playoffs. Perfect sense, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for watching the News at 5 with us. World News up next. We'll see you back here at 6 o'clock.